Okay, uh, today we will start the new chapter which is the root locus. Mm, the chapter 8, the chapter 8 would be root locus. Sir, from, from the last class there were uh, a PDF. Yes, you, you say us, I will send you. Yeah, yes. I, I, I have not uploaded yet. Okay. Okay, so uh, root locus techniques. This is uh, this is the chapter eight. Okay, we will look today. We we'll just said the root locus. Uh, it is important chapter. I think after the root locus, uh, we will see a few more topics. Not much. Okay, so the, our syllabus almost finished. That means if I finish the root locus, then we can say the ninety percent or eighty five percent syllabus. Complete. Okay. So what we'll see today, we'll see the definition of root locus and some property of the root locus and we'll see how to sketch the root locus. Okay. And uh, associated problems will be observed. Okay. So let's look at the root locus. Okay, see, here is the definition. Root locus is a graphical representation of the closed loop poles as a system parameter, is varied and is powerful method to analyze and design for stability and uh, transient response. That means it is a graphical representation of the closed loop poles. Okay, by using the root locus or by uh, use the concept of root locus, we can graphically represent the closed loop poles. We can, uh, we can represent a system uh, graphically using the closed loop poles. Okay, so it is a root locus. See, the root locus can be used to describe uh, qualitatively the performance of a system as various parameters are changed. For example, the effect of varying gain upon percentage overshoot, settling time, peak time can be uh, vividly displayed. Besides transient response, the root locus also gives a, a graphical representation of a system stability. Okay, we can say if it is stable or not by uh, see the root locus okay okay now see it can be defined as the representation of the parts of the closed loop poles as the gain is varied see this this is a closed loop transfer function right so here the transfer function is k by s square plus 10s plus k so if we vary the value of k, then the pole will be changed. Okay, the pole position will be changed. Let's say if I take the value of k as zero, then one pole at minus 10, another pole at zero. If I take the k as five, one pole is minus 9.47, another one is minus 0.53 like this so if i change the value of k then the position of the pole will be changed okay so if i change the gain if i change the k is the gain uh, then the position of the closed loop pole will be varied see let's say uh see this one j omega j omega axis this is a plane that is six that is ten two polar there the root locus shows the changes in the transient response as the gain k varies see first of all the poles are real for gains less than 25 see if it is higher than 25, then the pole will be complex value. Otherwise, pole will be real value. 
thus the system is over damp at k is equal to 25 the poles are real and multi multiple and hence uh, critically damped at k is greater than 25 the system is under damp three condition okay below 25 below 25 what happened at 25 what happened greater than 25 what happened okay they have said this the under damp portion the under damp portion of the root locus k is greater than uh, 25 we see that regardless of the value of gain the real parts the real uh, parts of the complex poles the real poles uh, the complex poles are always the same so settling time remains uh, the same regardless of the value of gain since t is equal to 4 by 6 t real part of the cp okay so if you change the increase the case increase the damping ratio uh, okay so just take uh, i can skip this one okay let's look at the properties of the root locus property what is the property how to draw the root locus that is the thing see uh, the properties of the root locus can be derived from the closed loop transfer function rs cs kgs by 1 plus kgs into hs now let's see uh, let's assume 1 plus kgs into G hs is equal to 0 so kg is into h is equal to minus one so uh, what is the value of this kg is h is m one angle this is the amplitude value one and angle is 2k plus one into 180 degree the value of k is equal to zero plus minus one plus minus two plus minus three that is the value here okay so angle uh, see the angle angle equation is 2k plus 1 into 180 degree 2k plus 1 into 180 degree and if i want to find out the k then how to find it see 1 over gs into hs okay so there is a thing there is the equation okay now see there are some rules okay there are some rules uh, to find out the uh, to draw the to uh, uh, sketch the root locus okay for uh, sketching the root locus there are some rules okay we have to take a look at the rules The first one, look at the first one. The number of branches of the root locus equals the number of close to poles. That means the number of branches would be equal to number of close to poles. Symmetry. The root locus is symmetrical about the real axis. Symmetry. The root locus is symmetrical about the real axis. The root locus is symmetrical about the real axis and real axis segments are there like on the real axis for k is greater than zero symmetry okay so it would be symmetrical real axis segments on the real axis see this is the real axis sigma for k is greater than zero when the value of k is higher than zero 
the root locus exists to the left of an odd number of real axes. So it would be on the left. Finite open loop poles and <clears throat> or finite open loop zeros. Open loop poles and zeros would be finite in this in that case. And see this the starting and ending points. The root locus begins at the finite and infinite poles. Uh, root locus, uh, the root locus begins at the finite and infinite poles of GSHS and ends at the at infinite uh, zeros of GSC. It will start it from the pole here, started from the pole and ends at the zeros. Okay, so like this, it would be look it like this. Say, uh, let me draw it again. Let's say, okay, how to draw the root locus? Say it is the pole, one pole, two pole. We have two pole, let's say minus two, minus three. And here, say minus, mm, let's say it is minus four, and it is minus five. So, it will start from here and end it here. Or you can write like this also. Any, any, anyone possible. Okay, from here to here or from here to here. Okay, that is the root loss. It starts from the poles and ends at the zeros. There are the finite, uh, at the finite and infinite poles, poles, the root loss begins from the poles and ends, ends at the finite and infinite zeros, ends at zeros. That is a thing. Okay, behavior at infinity. The root locus approaches a straight lines as asymptotes. Uh, this is called asymptotes. Uh, these things are called asymptotes, okay. The root locus approaches straight lines as asymptotes as the locus approaches infinity. Further, the equation of the asymptotes, sigma a, sigma a is the real axis intercept and angle theta a. So this is the equation for find, uh, finding out the sigma a and the theta a. So sigma a equation, what is the equation of sigma a? Summation of finite poles minus the summation of finite zeros divided by number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros. So how many poles and zeros are there? So just check it out. And theta A, equation of theta A, 2K plus one into pi, pi means 180 degree and number of finite, divided by number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros. Here the values of case are zero plus minus one plus minus two. Okay. So real axis breakaway and breaking points. The point where the locus uh, leaves the real axis is called the breakaway point and the point where the locus returns to the real axis is called the breaking point. So see, uh, break in, that is the break away point, the point at which the locus left leaves okay so it is a break away point and the point at which the locus in that is the break in point okay that is the break away point and break in point okay so remember this thing okay so break away and breaking points via differentiation so let's say kgs into hs so here see this k uh, s minus 3 s minus 5 divided by s plus 1 s plus 2 so just make the equation k into s square minus 8 s plus 15 s, s square 3 s plus 15. So from this figure, we can write like this. Uh, my poles are there as uh, 
zeros are there, three and four. So S minus three into S minus, oh no, oh no, this is another equation. Plus one, plus two, okay. I think it, it should be five, okay. Now for all points uh, along the root Lucas, KGS into HS is equal to minus one and S is equal to sigma. So let's assume that is minus one and assume S is the sigma. And what would happen? Solving for K, just we solve it for K, this one. Okay, just a, just a minute. Okay, now, now the for the k we know this equation. Now differentiate it with respect to k, then is equal to zero. To find the sigma, we found that sigma is equal to one point four five minus one point four five and three point eight two, which are the breakaway and breaking points. These are the breakaway and breaking points. Okay. So breakaway and breaking points with the differentiation, so we, you can do another thing. Without differentiation, you can also find out the breakaway and breaking points. Okay, breakaway and breaking points uh, uh, has this relation, one to m, summation of one to m, one by sigma plus zi is equal to one to n, one by sigma plus pi. Here, zi and pi are the negative of the zeros and poles values. So here, the zeros values, one over sigma minus three and one over sigma minus five, that, that is five, okay. And poles values, negative of the pole minus, minus minus one, that is plus one, minus minus two, that is the plus two. And the whole thing is sum summation. So if you simplify this, then you'll get this. Now middle term factor equation do the job and you'll get this, the values of sigmas are there. 1.4, minus 1.45 and 3.82, okay. okay. Now another thing, the J omega X is cross, uh, crossings. Let's say a closed loop transfer function. This is a transfer function. Now how to solve this one, okay. How to solve this one? So first of all, you have to check the stability. Just draw the root table. Complete row of zero. So here, I think, a complete row of zeros yields possibility for imaginary axis tools. So here, it would be complete row of zeros if it is zero. If it is zero, then it would be totally zero. So let's assume it is zero. So we'll find the case here. So forming uh, even polynomial by, so even polynomial here, even polynomial would be here, k is equal to 9.65 by using s square row and k is equal to 9.65. So if you put the k is equal to 9.65, then it would be real value. So just put the value. So S is equal to S square row and K is equal to 9.65. So 90 minus K S square. So just make a polynomial, put the values of K here, then you will get the value of S. So therefore the root Lucas crosses the G omega axis at plus minus 159 and at a gain of 9.65. So gain would be 9.65 and it will cross the uh, point plus minus 1.59. We conclude that the system is stable for this this range. So the system would be stable for this range. Okay, from this equation we will find this. So if you find something like that, so you will make the make sure that it it would be zero. This one is equal to zero. Then you'll find the value of k. Put that uh, now 
write a polynomial and put those values of k here, then you'll get the range of k and the point and the point at which the it will intersect. Okay, similarly, uh, another kind of problem <coughs> given a unity feedback system that has the forward transfer function. This is a transfer function. So from this transfer function, you have to find this one. GS is equal to K S plus two divided by S square minus four S plus 13. First thing first, you have to sketch the root locus. Second thing, find the imaginary axis crossings. Third, find the gain K at the G omega axis crossing. Find the break in point. Find the angle of departure from the update pole. So that is your problem. So five things you have to consider here. Okay, so at first of all, sketch the root locus. Okay, now see the equation zeros, zeros at minus two, zeros at minus two. Here for poles, let's assume this is zero. So here we know the equation. Okay, second order polynomial equation. So the equation of root, put the value, the, then it founds that two plus three i. Now put this value, two. The pole is here, two plus three i. Plus minus, definitely plus, plus two plus minus three i. So two is here, plus three i, minus three i. So these are the two poles, two poles are there. And the minus two, S is to minus two, minus two. So infinity and minus two in between the infinity to minus two. So it will start from here and the this thing would be like this. Okay, that is the root locus of this. The second one, second question: Find the imaginary axis crossing at which point it will cross imaginary point. So we let's consider this TS. What would be the TS? This will be GS divided by one plus GS into HS. Now we know the value of GS. Okay, and we know the value of GS here. Put this one. Okay, so and, and, and another thing. So here the value just uh, take a look at here mm -hmm. find the image for the imaginary axis crossing we have to take the this one uh 2k plus 13 k minus 4. so s if s is equal to 4 so if you put s is equal to 4 then k sorry k is equal to 4 then this row will be zero. This will be zero. So s square plus 2k plus 13 is equal to zero. So just then you can write the polynomial here. s square plus 2k plus 13 is equal to zero. Now put the value of k. k is equal to 4. 8 plus 13, 21. So s is equal to plus minus the square root of 21. S is equal to plus minus square root of 21. Okay. Now put this value here. 2k plus 13 is 0. Okay. According, he, according to this, write the equation. S square, S square plus k, k minus 4 plus k minus 4 into S plus 2k plus 13. Three terms are there. Okay. Three terms are there. Three terms are there. Okay. Write like this. Uh, uh, find the gain k. You find the k is equal to 4, definitely 4. Gain is 4. At which the omega is crossing. Find the break breaking point. Okay, so breaking point to find the breaking point, this is the formula. Minus 1. Uh, GS, put the values of GS is equal to minus 1. Is that
okay then then what we have seen we have seen we will find the value of k is in terms we have to differentiate in, in terms of sigma then you get the value sigma is uh, minus 7.3 and the last one the find the angle of departure from the uh, complex pole so complex pole is there here is the complex pole uh, angle of departure formula is different okay so i will show you it later the second part this is another topic i have to cover then i will show it okay now see this one it scales the root locus and its asymptotes uh, for a unity feedback system that has the forward transfer functions okay so the remaining things the remaining things i'll show you in the next class okay the angle how to find out the breakaway and break-in angle okay that is another topic uh, that is not re uh, actually related but uh, it will take time to show it okay you can check here also in the book you will also see the equations see this one that is the equation for the closed loop transfer function okay and here is the equation kgs into hs okay and here's the equation of angle and some other things let me show you sketching the root locus how to sketch the root locus i also have shown you uh, this equation refining the s h okay k is equal to c minus one over gs into hs breakaway and break in points by differentiation through the differentiation you can find also but without the break and breaking points two examples are given j omega x is crossing okay the gain at the imaginary x is crossing what would be the gain this problem also have been shown okay angles of departure and arrival c that is the thing the angle of departure and arrival how to find out see uh, in this subsection okay figure 8.15 look at the figure 8.15 i think this one yes this is the figure 8.15 in the figure 8.15 see theta one that is the angle negative theta one theta two theta two that is the angle with the zeros uh, theta 3 theta 3 it is also angle at the zeros minus theta 4 that is this is the angle with the poles okay so see the angle with the poles would be negative and angle at the zeros would be positive is equal to 2k plus 1 into 180 see Okay, if we assume a point on the root locus sigma uh, epsilon that close to a complex pole, the sum of the angles drawn from all finite poles and zeros at this point is an odd multiple of 180 degree. Except for the fold that is uh, epsilon close to that point. We assume all angles drawn from all other poles are zero and zeros are drawn directly to the pole that is near the point. Thus, the only unknown angle is the sum of the angle drawn. Okay. Using this formula, you can find out the angles, particular angle. Okay, how to draw it? Let's look at example. See this. Given the unity feedback, this is the unity feedback system. Find the angle of departure from the complex poles. Now they, they are asked to find out the angle of departure. Using the poles and zeros, GS uh, is equal to S plus 2 divided by S plus 3 into S square plus 2 S plus 2. This is the GS. So, figure 8.17 GS. Okay. We calculate the sum of angles down to a point epsilon close to the complex pole minus 1 plus J1 in the second quadrant. Thus, see this. So, that is the theta 1. We assume first one is a theta 1. 
that is the theta 2 that is theta 2 and that is theta 3 that is theta 4 we just assume a point here we just are considering this point in terms of this we'll find okay now minus theta 1 minus theta 2 plus theta 4, 3 minus theta 4 is equal to minus theta 1 angular departure minus 90 degree plus 10 inverse see minus theta 1 we would like to find out this one uh, minus theta 2 theta 2 is 90 degree then definitely theta 3 what is the value of th theta 3 10 inverse 1 by 1 see this this one divided by this one minus 10 inverse theta 4 there is theta 4 see the amplitude amplitude is 1 1 this one 1 2 this one 10 inverse 1 by 2 1 by 2 is equal to 180 degree now do the job solve it at uh, theta becomes minus 251.6 degree or 108.4 degree a sketch of the root locus is shown so that is the root locus that is how the departure angle departure angle from the compass rules helps us to refine the shape okay so it would be look like this so this problem has been given here now look at here angle of departure okay angle from zero see this is pole this is pole so just we are considering this one so angle from zero angle from pole is a fourth quadrant angle from the pole first quadrant 180 degree so 10 inverse minus 3 by 4 this point just you take the look at this point okay this is 90 degree this is 90 degree this pole is 90 degree minus theta and here here is the 3 by 4 the maximum value is 4 here, here is the 3 here is the 4 okay 2 minus 2 2 minus 2 the figure would be look like this it would be like this okay. that is 90 degree that is 90 degree okay so from that is zeros so add this one so that is the theta that is the theta and here what is the value 4 3 3 by 4 see 10 inverse 3 the value is value is 3 here so 10 inverse 3 by 4 2 minus 2 minus minus 2 it would be 4 okay so 180 degree so find that theta theta is, is equal to minus 2 so what we have found we have found that the first the last question find the angle of departure from here we have found the angle of departure which is the minus 233.1 degree okay. so similarly another one sketch the uh, root locus and its asymptotes for a unity feedback system that has the forward transfer function so it is another unity feedback system this is the given now sigma f put the formula here and theta f put the formula and you get the okay. so that is your chapter 8 what we have completed okay these, these are the basic uh, rules for uh, sketching okay. finding critical points
some other problems are also there you can check if you want you can check the problems okay so we'll not check this one <clears throat> 